Hello and welcome to all the ghouls and vampires out there. I'm Cho. Here with me is my co-host, Dan. Hello and greetings. For this podcast, we really should just change it to Hello and welcome to all the freakily dressed guys and weirdos trying to scare kids from amusement parks or land or something. But let's keep going. <laughs> We're already this far in. Welcome to the Mystery Inc. podcast. Zoinks! This, Jeepers. Yeah, this video is going to be a pretty good one. I hope. Shaggy helps Velma up, Freddy, Daphne, because, you know, Scooby and Shaggy kind of briefly forgot about their friends because they were busy capturing the guy. And it's just really funny how it's just, you know, the, the suits of armor. Anyways, the dude is well and truly pinned down. And the girls need help because, you know, they're kind of hanging over the ledge. And it's here that it's a little interesting that Shaggy actually apparently has more upper body strength than I actually previously thought he did. What I mean is he looks so skinny and yet he's able to bear the weight of Velma. Then again, he carries the weight of Scooby all the time. All the times. And Scooby's probably what, like 120 pounds? You have a large Great Dane that eats a lot. Yeah, so... That but then to... again, he burns a lot of energy running away from uh, freaky people in uh, bad Halloween costumes. Yeah. Yeah. So, the girls are helped up. And, of course, Velma hurries over at probably f a speed faster than the Flash to unmask the guy. Honestly, it's just one clip to the next and she's unmasking him. You know, today's movies would have had an entire conversation, an entire scene as they're heading down the stairs. I prefer this. Just cut to her pulling the mask off because the guy's knocked out. And she's always eager to uh, take off the mask. Her and Freddy. And when she pulls the mask off, I gotta say, like, he's like, zoinks! Totally uglier without the mask than with the mask on. <laughs> Just he seems nondescript. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's putting it... Gently. He is pretty hideous. But the humorous thing is that you have Shaggy, of course, who reacts like I did, except he says something really different. Like, it's Mr. Beeman, the real estate agent. So, Mr. Beeman is apparently the real estate agent of a dark, creepy castle. That, given how the ledge shattered when Freddy and Velma and Daphne came running along, is in questionable condition. So why was he trying to scare people off, you might ask? Well, the answer, as Velma explains it, is that... Well, Velma and Freddy explain it, is that he was apparently... He had apparently built himself a small printing press in the basement of the castle and was printing millions of counterfeit dollars in order to make himself a millionaire and slip in this these counterfeit dollars in with the legitimate dollars. So basically he's a politician. And the only thing is is that he's creating needless inflation. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, we have to crack some jokes about this. But actually, he would be creating a lot of inflation if he's printing that many bills. His hands are completely green under the uh, claws. And, you know, I can kind of admire the printing of a lot of money, counterfeit dollars, to an extent, just because, well, you know, dude's got to make his cash, and given how things seem to work with the system and whatnot, and politicians seem to do this all the time, needlessly, but on the other hand, dude, you're going to make everybody else's life miserable. What the heck are you doing? He was caught green-handed. Yeah. But... He would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids and their dumb dog, too. And we're trolling a little in this episode, only because this part is so amusing. So it, classic Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Wish a Raymond? Oh, man, I love Scooby. But this scene is the last of the prologue, and from there it steps into a bit of the frame narrative for this part of the movie wherein we see that 
really the entire story has been Daphne recounting the events of this chase through a castle and this entire case to a news reporter on something like Channel 3 or Channel 5 News or something and that she's doing an interview. Daphne describes it as one of their most frightening cases but it's uh, the tone kind of makes me wonder was it really that frightening for you Daphne? She sounds more like someone who's like can I interest you in this can of snake oil? It's like flattering the audience. It's like yeah, it's, trying to get them to read to read and watch more of her cases. Yeah, I'm just saying she's clearly trying to sell it. But this is where I really like what this movie is doing here. They're setting Daphne up as the saleswoman of the team. So that cuz the team by the by the middle of and even early Scooby Doo are essentially murder mystery celebrities and investigators. They're a really, really successful PI company. But Daphne, da, not Daphne, Velma is mostly concerned with solving the case. Same with Freddy. So that you kind of wonder, okay, who was the, who was the marketing department here? And from what I can see, tell, it, there are a few episodes and there are times when it seems like it's Shaggy who's really good at selling the team. There's times when it's Freddy, but it seems like Daphne was a real saleswoman. And she's also the most photogenic of the entire team. Freddy seems to be photogenic, but as it's later revealed, he's just... A, he, he can't stand being in front of a camera. So that... It might be weird. I like the live-action movie, as I've said before, but I really like that Freddy is too shy to an extent. And this is something that I find really funny because... A lot of... I've actually met some fairly good-looking people who are shy and don't want to be in front of a camera. And it's something that people tend to forget about. I've actually met some people who are incredibly good-looking, both of the male and female sexes. And it is a fascinating experience to be able to talk to them and realize that a few of them could go into modeling and there's just no interest. And there's even a shyness towards it. For a dandy like uh, Fred to be very camera shy seems like a bit of a contradiction. Yeah, and that adds nuance to his character. But it's not completely separate. As you mentioned, there are some people that like to look good, but they get shy. Yeah. I think with Freddy, it's just that he's naturally supposed to be good looking here in this movie. But he's not... He's not someone who's needlessly vain he seems to be someone who is frightened of getting too much attention so it's a bit of a peculiarity it, it does create a bit of a complexity in the character Daphne doesn't seem to mind being looked at and looked upon as the main person to like the, the main face of Mystery Inc and as for Velma I don't think she's got much of the same interest that Daphne probably has in sale and in marketing the team. That said, Freddy and Velma in this movie seem to have been mostly the guys and gal cracking the cases. Shaggy and Scooby, who knows what their role was other than just bagging the guys, but I do think that I like some of the depictions of where Sh Shaggy would suggest where they should go or, or suggest how to market the team. So I think that most of the sales were probably a mixture of Freddy, Shaggy, and Velma. Not Velma, Daphne, I mean. Shoot, I'm tired. Velma, I think uh, she's the one that the police like the most because she's the one that can explain it in le legal and police terms. Yeah, and maybe Freddy could as well, to an extent. And she lays out all the evidence right there. Yeah. Freddy, I'm just saying, because in the original cartoons, he did occasionally explain it to the police. Shaggy didn't seem very comfortable with that. Daphne might get, might have some jerks who might make assumptions or comments, so she's probably not going to want to deal with them. 
I'm just saying she's supposed to be a very good looking lady. And there are some jerks in some police divisions. Not all, some. Like with everything in life, one needs to apply nuance to every situation. Scooby is just simply Shaggy's dog. As far as publicly goes, no one's going to really deal with him too much because he's Shaggy's dog. And cheapers, like, you've... I don't know. I, I just find this frame narrative where it's the character explaining the story is just something a little charming. So that, though they don't state it, they don't state how much time has passed. I get the feeling that it's almost been five, six years. Vel Velma's obviously become a successful author and has a decent bookstore under her name. One which would never thrive in this economy. I'm just saying. I'm joking. Um, you've got Daphne who's been able to complete a journalist degree. You have... Freddie, who was able to get a probably a degree in film production, editing, and whatnot, and audio editing and whatnot. He's obviously learned how to be a producer. Shaggy and Scooby sadly seem to be bouncing from job to job, and just they seem to have peaked with the team, and now their lives are in decline. Which that's a little sad. That happens. There's another piece of evidence from how long time has passed. Velma is bored with owning a mystery sh st shop. Yeah, so she's been able to... She's out of the struggling period. And she's now into the successful period, but now she's getting bored with her success to an extent. The Honeypoot Moon period is over. She loves mystery. Yeah, but... It, okay, I'm actually going to say... The first period would be the struggle. The battle to keep the shop opening. And whatnot. The war just to make ends meet then would come probably the honeymoon period and now she's in the board period so she was probably initially very she probably had to struggle quite a bit and had to work really hard but now she's unsure of what she's wanting to do i think that it, it's not simply boredom it's also loneliness for her because all her friends moved away daphne and freddie are running around mostly I get the feeling Daphne is one, the one chasing one dream after another, and Freddy's trying to be supportive and trying to continue to chase the girl of his dreams, but he's really having a hard time and wanting to settle down to an extent because he's missing his friends. But on the other hand, he is supportive, and this is his dream too. Shaggy and Scooby seem lost. I think that those two should... It might be weird, but maybe Shaggy should write a book or something about his experiences with the mystery and company and he should jump in with the bookstore and work as an employee or something or work for Daphne in some capacity or write uh, cooking as uh, books cookbooks yeah I guess so he should probably apply for Gordon Ramsay's one show the problem is that he'd be his, his one best customer yeah he actually I, I could see him probably teaching Gordon Ramsay a thing or two about cooking because Shaggy's probably a better chef I say taste testing, but then you won't have anything else. <laughs> yeah. I think Gordon Ramsay probably would fire him after the first day. Yeah. Also, let's be honest. Shaggy would be a better cook. And that might annoy yeah, Gordon Ramsay. Because Shaggy's going to go, yeah, I don't know, man. Zoinksy could use a bit of this. Oh, how about this spice? Hey, Scoob, let's try this. Yeah, the thing that, about Chef Ramsay is that he doesn't mind spice. But if it's like... Too spicy. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying Scooby and Shaggy would just... Yeah, yeah. But anyways, yeah, we're, we're kind of bouncing between different subjects here. Because here it's classic Scooby-Doo, but the frame narrative is the main part of this video. But anyways, tell us what you think in the comment section down below. And don't forget to try to scare that like and that subscribe button in order to stay tuned for our next video. And jinkies, it's going to be a better one.